Amen. I'm so excited to share the Word of God with you this morning. You know, I was reading through the New Testament. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a New Testament guy, like some of us younger guys. We seem to like the New Testament. And I was thinking, man, to myself, I was thinking, man, I'm, I'm, I'm like Paul. And I don't, now, you're probably thinking, not really, but I'm not like this Paul. This Paul that works at the camp can fix anything. I can't fix nothing. But the Paul in the Bible, I was realizing, man, we know he was once Saul, and all of a sudden he had an encounter with Christ, and forever his life was changed. He went on to write most of the New Testament to lead the church. And I'm thinking, I'm Paul. Now, again, this is just me thinking. I'm thinking, man, I'm so much like Paul. I just want to revolutionize. I want to do all these things. And the more I read, I find out, I think I'm a little more like Peter. <laughs> I know. It's, it's really not funny. But uh, I'm looking at the life of Peter, and I'm thinking, I think I'm that guy. And we're going to talk a little bit today about Peter. And I'm gonna, uh, I guess I'm going to title today is Life Outside the Boat. As we begin to, and we're going to go through and read a bunch of scripture, and we're going to look at the life of Peter and just pull out some things that I believe God wants to show us as a church today. And um, whether you're in this room today and you're a Paul or a Peter, man, thank God that uh, he used them both. Amen? Amen? You know, I go all the way to, I'm going to start off in Matthew in chapter 4. We're going to read just a few verses here. Uh, I'm going to start in verse, uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. And uh, we're just going to read about whenever Jesus came and called called him. And he says uh, in verse 18, it says, and Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they immediately, somebody say immediately, immediately. they immediately left their nets and followed him. Now that can preach all on its own. Now here we are, the first glimpse of Peter just, and Andrew, them just dropping everything. Again, it leads me to believe, of course, they knew, they must have known of um, Old Testament prophecy and all that, the Messiah was coming, all of a sudden he comes in and like just in a moment's notice, follow me, and they drop everything. Realize their livelihood, their way to make a living, family, friends, they leave everything to follow Jesus. I'm like, now I don't mind being that Peter, right? That sounds pretty good. That sounds like, okay, Peter, Peter's all right. And we jump over a few verses. Let's see here. Let's go to Matthew um, 16, chapter 16, verse 13 through 19. This is another one of, to me, the highlights in Peter when Peter is uh, stepping up. It says, when Jesus came into the region of Carissa and Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am? The son of man? And they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, Peter. Realize Peter was the guy that would speak up in a moment's notice. He was the loud guy in the group. Everybody's got that loud person in the group that sometimes you're uncomfortable going to a restaurant or somewhere with because they're going to be the loud. And they're going to be the one that calls the waitress out. You know, some of us, like last night, we were at Chili's and this lady like spilled water on me and didn't even know it. And I'm like, my phone's like wet. I'm like, my shirt's wet. It's like she just walks off. I'm like. Then, okay, then we ordered, then she brings back a plate for an appetizer. It's got like, it's dirty. And I'm just like, again, I'm, so I realize I'm not so much like Peter because Peter would have been like, Peter might have threw it at her. If you know anything about Peter, Peter had a temper. Peter would speak out. Um, and this time, whenever, when Jesus is asking who he is, Peter's the one that says, I know who you are. So again, Peter didn't have a problem of speaking up. And you're going to see that again whenever we go, go to John 13, 7 and 9. You'll like this one. Excuse me. And here we are. And Jesus said and answered to him, What am I doing? You do not understand now, but you will after this. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. So here they are, he's getting ready. Jesus is getting ready to wash the disciples' feet. Peter said, You'll never wash my feet. And Jesus answered and said, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. So then Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not only my feet, but my hands and my head also. 
So again, here's Peter like, Jesus, I'm not worthy for you to wash my feet. And Jesus says, I'm going to wash them or you have no part of me. Well, I'll tell you what, you can wash my hands, you can wash my head, you can scratch my back. I mean, again, this is Peter. This is Peter going, Peter goes sometimes above and beyond, right? The, the no filter, just throwing it out there. That's Peter. That's Peter. Matthew 16, 21 and 23. If you didn't get to read any this week, we're going to catch you up this morning. Amen? We're going to catch you up. It's one of these overdoing scripture-wise, but it's all good. Scripture's always good. Amen? Amen. Which one did I tell you? Okay. Thank you. That was on the wrong one. Here we go. It says, From the time that Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things for the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, And be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Now here's Peter, again, rebuking Jesus. Right? This this is Peter, wash my hands, wash my feet, all this. Now I'm going to rebuke you saying, far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. And he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me and you are not mindful of the things of God, but of things of men. So again, here's Peter, again, just not fully understanding that Again, we know the purpose of Christ was to eventually come to the cross and die so that we could be saved. And this is just Peter. I just see Peter being so excited and like, nothing, nothing's going to happen to you, Jesus. I'm going to, we won't let that happen, God. And he's saying, look, that's, that's why I'm here. Just, just step aside. Let me, let me do what I came to do. Amen? Let's go a little further in the life of Peter. Let's go to Mark 14 and 29. Somebody say, he's going somewhere. I'm going somewhere, I promise. (laughs) Here we go. In verse 29, it starts out, and Peter said to him, even if all who are made to stumble, yet I will not be. Jesus said to him, surely I say to you today that even this night before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he spoke more and says, if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said, likewise. All right, we're just going to hold right there for a moment. Again, here's Peter. Jesus is saying, Peter, you're going to deny. He's like, I'm telling you, I will die before I deny you. See, this is when times like this, I go back and look at my own life and think I'm more like a Peter. Again, I can remember being the young Christian in the house that says, God, I will, man, I will live the rest of my life for you. Nothing will ever fall to me. I will never waver. I will trust you. I will honor you. Every decision I make, I mean, just so gung-ho. And yet all of a sudden, a situation can come into your life, and all of a sudden you find yourself as far from God as you ever were. And you're like, man, never thought that would have been me. I meant one week, I'm ready to change the world. The next week, I don't even want to leave the house. Amen? Some of you has been there today. I'm telling you, God's got something for you. Amen? I'm going to read a little bit further in here, and you're going to see this again. I'm going to pick up in uh, verse 35, it says, he went a little further and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, the things are possible for you. Take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Then he came and found them sleeping and said to Peter. So here's Jesus is praying. It's all about to go down. And here's Peter asleep. Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So again, here is Peter asleep. He's being woken up by Jesus. Again, he loves Jesus, there's no doubt, but he's just, he has some issues. You know why? He's like most of us. It says, again, he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again. Again. Think about this. This is Jesus. This is, it would almost be like your boss on the job. If your boss come in and caught you sleeping and he said, look, I'm not going to fire you right now, but you got to, you got to wake up. And the boss comes back, and there you are, knocked out again. Is that crazy? And he says, then he came, the, uh, then you, in verse 41, it says, he came the third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See my betrayer at hand. So again, they can't stay awake. We can even go further than that and find out when they come to arrest Jesus, what does Peter do? He cuts off the guy's ear, right? This is Peter. This is This is us. This is a guy that is full of emotion that is, in one minute he seems like, you are the Christ, you are the Son of God. To the next moment, I don't know who that guy is. But I want to go all the way back. 
all the way back to a story. And this is a story that I really want to focus in on today in Matthew 14, 22 and 33. This is a story that we've heard many times. So it's, again, I, but I, I do know that God can give you fresh revelation. Amen. Even if it's a story you've heard many times. Matthew 14 and 22. This has to do with Peter walking on water. It says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat. Notice the word immediately. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. While he sent the multitudes away. And when he sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. If you're asking me, this is Jesus saying, I need some time away from these guys. Probably Peter's mouth, you know, is probably just getting on his nerves like, all right, I'm going to send y'all out on the water. Y'all, y'all go ahead. I'll catch up to you guys. It says, now when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, so this is early in the morning, Jesus went to them walking on, and I'm sorry, walking on the sea, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. It is a ghost, they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And here we go with Peter again. And Peter answered and said unto him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind was bolstering, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately, everybody say immediately. Immediately Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and called him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat and the wind ceased, Then those who were in the boat came and worshiped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. I want you to picture this with me. You're on this boat, right? Everybody's on the boat. The waves are crazy. The seas are getting rough. All of a sudden, you see some figure walking to you. It's early in the morning. You can't sleep. You're half awake, right? And all of a sudden, so they cry out and think it's a ghost. And Jesus says, It is I. And all of a sudden, this is what pops in Peter's mind at this moment. Hey, how about you tell me that I can come out there to you? Think, think about it for a moment. Again, everything's crazy. You thought he was a ghost. Now you find out it's Jesus and you say, hey, can I come out there with you? Only Peter, right? And Peter steps out of the boat. And so many times, Peter gets such a bad rap. Peter didn't have no faith, couldn't walk on no water. When's the last time you walked on water? I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. Again, man, sometimes we bash Peter and say, Peter didn't have no faith. Peter, how could you do that? But this is what I realized when I read this story. Nobody else got out of the boat. Nobody. Everybody else. You know they were all awake. You know they were all there. You know they were all fearful. All of a sudden, Peter says, Jesus, let me come out there to you. And I'm sure he made some steps. Wouldn't you think somebody would have been like, dude, I want to do that. Wouldn't you want to walk on water? I mean, if you're in this service today, and let's say um, say God says, you know what? Everybody loves money. goes, I'm going to give you $1,000. And you walk up and it's magically a thousand. How many of you is going to come up front, right? Be the biggest altar call you've ever seen. Everybody's like, yes. But walking on water, like nobody else, none of the other ones said, should we? No, they're all just watching. Get ready. Jump with me over to Mark 6, 47 and 48. It's another account of the same story, just a different book here. And I want you to see what it says right here. Peter stepped out of the boat. Peter stepped out of the boat. Mark 6, 47 and 48 says this. It says, Now when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. Then he saw them straining at rowing, for the wind was against them. Now about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking by the sea, I'm sorry, walking on the sea, and would have passed them by. Notice that. Jesus' intent was not to go out there and help them. It says right here that he... He planned on just walking by, right? Realize that they're in this predicament. They're in this boat. They're in this sea because Jesus immediately sent them out there. This is where he put them. He put them in the middle of this storm. Amen? Jesus put them out there. Again, not everything we face is from the devil. Amen? Let me just say there's, there's some things that we face that, you know what, that man, that realize that if we live a life in Christ, guess what? Where, wherever we go and where God sends us, he is with us. And it don't always mean because it's tough that that's not where we're supposed to be. Amen? Sometimes you've got to go through some things. You've got to go through them because that's how you get to the other side. So, again, he planned on it, says, 
He came to them walking on the sea and would have passed them by. Had they not started screaming, ghosts, and afraid, I think Jesus would have kept walking. I think he would have kept walking. I don't even think he would have stopped. It would have just been like, right? And that's what it says. He would have passed them by. What that tells me is there's sometimes in life, guess what? You've got to cry out to him. Sometimes we think that, and I understand that God knows right where we are, and God knows our heart. But guess what? Like any father, God wants to know that he's needed. God wants to know that you need him. You know, as a father, there's many times we see our kids doing stuff, and you're like, geez, they're totally messing that up. And there's many times as a father, there's nothing greater than when your kid goes to you and goes, Dad, can you help me do this? Yes, I am super dad. I will show you the ways of the master, right? <laughs> you know, dads, you know what that's like when you do something and your kids are like, that is so awesome. And you're thinking, as long as they're young, I'm good. When they get older, they're going to be like, Dad, you're a dork. But <laughs> during those times, I can be the superhero. The same way Jesus is going to pass them by, but all of a sudden they cry out to him and he stops. What that tells me and what that gives me hope of today, that, you know what, that whatever's going on in my life, that just the sound of my voice, Jesus can change what he's doing. Jesus can be doing something when he hears his child call out to him. Guess what? Hear me today, church. Jesus will stop what he's doing to rescue you. He would have passed him by. And as you continue going on and you study about Peter, and you'll see that, uh, man, Peter, after denying Christ and when Jesus made eye contact with him, it says Peter went off and whipped bitterly. Again, this is just another one. This is the roller coaster ride of Peter, of one minute being the gung-ho Christian, the rock, to being, man, I let him down again. But it gives hope for guys like me, amen, that don't always have it together. And is trying to, trying to find his way through faith and realize that, you know what, there's going to be some ups and there's going to be some downs. But if I look at Peter's life, all of a sudden you'll find out if you jump over. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, one of the highlights in Peter's life. Acts 2 and verse 38. And it says, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to those who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation, those who gladly received his words, were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. Amen? Amen. So here's Peter, as went on through all these trials and tribulations, and now what, what Peter has realized to do, what many of us can't do is, one, forgive ourselves, dust ourselves off, suck our pride up, and say, you know what, I'm going to continue on in the life that Christ is trying to bring me to. Amen? Amen. See, there's nothing worse, hear me, and I speak from experience, there's nothing worse than being in the church and failing God and then all of a sudden you feel like you have no place in his house any longer. You feel like, how can God use me and bless me because I totally blew it? Well, let me tell you what. Let Peter be hope to you today. Because it wasn't so long ago that Peter just denied Christ. You'll find out it wasn't so long ago that when Christ come back after the resurrection and revealed himself to the disciples, Peter went out fishing. Here's his risen Savior, and Peter's gone back to what he started doing, fishing. Peter had issues. Peter struggled. And all of a sudden, I see in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, when the church is coming about, that Peter's the one that's given the message. And 3,000 people are being saved. You can go on further in Peter's life, and you'll find out. Let's go uh, 1 Peter, verse 1. I'm sorry, 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 6. It says, In this you greatly rejoice, through now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes through it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let me read it to you from the message translation. It may make a little more sense here. It says, I know how great this makes you feel. Even though you have put up every kind of aggravation in the meantime, pure gold put in the fire comes out is proved pure. Genuine faith put through this suffering comes out proved genuine. When Jesus wraps this all up, it's your faith, not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. 
We talk about the faith and we talk about going through some things. We had a meeting Friday and pastor was sharing with us a little bit how he was just saying that how, you know, you have to go through things to increase your faith. You have to go through some things. How is your faith ever going to be greater if you never have to go through things? And this is what took me back when I thought about Peter and I thought about stepping out on that water. And what really hit me is this last two weeks has been like some of the worst two weeks of my life. I've been like, I wasn't here the other Sunday. I was like, I'm telling you, I am, I am a guy. And ladies, if your husband's like this, when they're sick, they're going to die. I don't know if you have a husband like that. Like, I'm like on the couch. I can't move. I can't. I'm like, really, I thought this was it. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And of course, normal people, normal would have just been like, take a little pill and be done. But I'm like, can't move. My whole body hurts. I'm just, we got to go to a doctor. We got to go somewhere. So I've been sick. The weather's been bad, right? Michael Gilly, me, me, me and Pastor Michael, we, we work here every day together. And I was like, I was like, man, I feel like I'm just in a funk. I just feel weird. I don't feel good. I'm still congested. The weather's not good. You ever get like where you just don't feel like there's nothing really wrong. You're just like, mm. yeah, come on now. I'm just, sometimes it's just like, I wish I could pimp one. I wish I could say if I'd done this, it would be great. But And going back, looking through this and listening to what Pastor had to say, I got to thinking, I think my problem is, I think I diagnosed my problem. And this may be your problem. I'm not a doctor, so, you know, take it as you will. But I think the problem is I hadn't stepped out of the boat in a while. I really do. I mean, Peter's stepping out of the boat. I meant no idea what's going to happen. Just, Lord, if you tell me to come, I'm, here I come. When is the last time we stepped out of the boat? When is the last time, man, we, we trusted and believed God for something that we couldn't accomplish on our own? And sometimes we come to God with such crazy requests. Lord, just help me get through this day. He's the God of heaven and earth, and all we want to do is get till 5 o'clock. Thank you, Jesus. I'm off work. I made it. Really? That's what we're using him for. That's what we're doing. Think about it. When is the last time, man, you have been inspired, encouraged, and just excited about something that God has spoken to your life? When is the last time God has, as you know, has called you to do something, is, is speaking in your heart and your spirit, is wanting you to step out in faith? It could be in a job. It could be a business. It could be personal. I mean, it could, go, it could be here at the church. When has God spoke out to you? And you're like, you know what, man? I'm going to step out of the boat. I, this is what I realized from reading the scripture. I realized that, you know what? Immediately, Jesus grabbed him. How can Jesus grab you and pick you up if you don't ever take the step? Right? Again, everybody wants to dog Peter. And I'm sure, I, I, you know, it don't record everything, but I'm sure they had talks, the disciples, about that. Dude, I can't believe you stepped out of the boat. What were you thinking? Are you kidding me? You can't even swim. No floaties, no nothing. You just stepped out. That's crazy. Think about it. How many times in your life have you stepped out on a word? Because really that's all it was was the word. He said, bid me to come. Jesus said, come. Here we go. Do you remember that feeling? I remember those feelings of when God would speak it and you're like, I don't care what anybody else says. You know what? The rest of everybody else can stay in the boat. And that's fine. But I'm stepping out into what God is calling me to. You know, I think about our move to Texas, which is almost... This June will be two years that we packed up everything and, and moved out here. And I'm thinking, that's, to me, that was one of those, we're, we're stepping out the boat. I mean, I can remember the garage sales and selling all this stuff to try to fit stuff in a truck to move out here. And I can remember my family members and my sister particularly, if you know anything about my sister loves me to death. Just know that. I am coined her favorite, and she will call and cry at the drop of a hat just because I'm not, no longer in Florida. So I have to deal with this crazy lady which is good that she loves me. But again, it's like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And we had other friends that were supportive, and you had, we've had just as many people that were, you're not going anywhere. My wife's mother. Hey. <laughs> just so you know, guys, when you go to take your mother-in-law's baby and grandkids out of the state, you are on the list. <laughs> just let me say that. You are on the list. And I don't know that you get off that. I'm just saying. But I can remember through those times, and me and my wife are not, no, again, we're normal folks. We're not super spiritual like, Jesus said it, and we're doing it, and that is the end of it. No, there were many nights we're like sitting around going, really, what are we doing? I mean, let's think rationally. Where are we going to work? I don't know. Where are we going to stay? I, I'm not sure. 
Do we even know how to get there? The last time I come, I had to call Jeremy like, dude, I don't know where I'm at. And it took me hours. I was lost. I'm like, this is what we're doing. This is the word that we're stepping out on. It was crazy. But I realized, man, for God to show up mightily in our life and God to do something that's worthy, we got to get out of the boat. I've got to get out of the boat. I was telling her, I said, look, I don't, I don't know that we've really jumped out of that boat since we've got here. I mean, really. I mean, really, have we really just, what are we believing God to do in, in, in our life as a family? What are we believing God to do in our ministry? I mean, what, what is it that we're asking of God? Are we, are we asking anything that we can't accomplish on our own? Because when you don't do that, you're just comfortable hanging out on the boat. You know, I want to be Paul. I do. I wouldn't mind being that Paul either because, he can, again, he can fix everything. But I want, to be, I want to be the guy that never messes up. And, man, just seems like he just revolutionizes the world. But you know what? I'm okay being Peter. Because if one thing I learned, you know what? Peter wasn't afraid to step out. Peter wasn't afraid to speak up. Peter, P- Peter was one of us. He was an imperfect person that loved Jesus and, and really done his best. And there were times that he messed up and he would dust himself off and he would get it back together. And I think that's where some of us are this morning. I believe there's some of us in here, you know what, that you've just been sitting in the boat for a little too long. We just get comfortable. That's human nature. Human nature, even coming to church, we get comfortable. That's why most of us go to the same seat every week, right, because it's comfortable. And when you walk in and someone's in your seat, you don't say it, but you're like, (laughs) what are they doing? That's my seat. I don't care that they don't know Jesus and it's their first time. I sit there, right? That's what we tend to do. We get comfortable. We get comfortable. It's safer in the boat. Even with all the winds and all the craziness, and even though they were, they were working hard and they were a little scared, it was still safer in the boat than it was trying to take steps on that water. And even though Peter didn't make it all the way, and I think it's really just because Peter couldn't believe he was doing it. They want to, you know, again, it says little faith. Guess what? If little faith can let me walk on water, I'll take that. We, that's it. We're going over to the camp. We're all going to walk. We're all going to walk across the lake. Think about it. Little faith. That's what little faith did for Peter. Little faith, he walked on water. Where are you at today? Pastor Michael's going to get ready to come back up for me. You know, as I look at my life, I look back at these moments that I stepped out. I wish James and Ben and them were guys were here today. If you know James and Ben, they're, they're in shape guys. They walk around like, you know, I mean, they've got big arms and all this. Well, recently my son had taught me to join in the gym. Now, if you know anything about me, you know that one of my goals in life is just to be ripped to shreds, but I have no motivation to do that. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Um, I have boxes of muscle magazines that go back 20, 25 years. We were going through some boxes and like, look at this old magazine with Arnold. And it was like, again, because I've always loved the way them guys look. But I didn't want to do anything to look like that. Not that I even could if it was possible. But anyway, so I got this gym membership and I went to the gym with Ben and James. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to work what they work. I'm going to lift what they lift. And I think it was about, I don't know if it was the first day that I hurt my shoulder. That's for real. I'm like, that's it. I'm done. I was like, I got to take a break. But, you know, faith is so much like that. Again, if you don't work it, you know, I can't not go to the gym ever. I can't not eat right. I can't do all them things and expect to look good and just to rip my shirt off here before you'd be like, ah, all right? If I was to do that now, you'd be like, oh, my gosh. (laughs) Cameras off, right? If we're not believing for some things, really, what are we doing with this thing we call faith? I mean, what are we... What are we really living this life for? What are we really going after? What are we believing God for? That You know what? That When's the last time you had a dream that if God didn't do it, it's not coming to pass? When is the last time maybe you drove by a house and said, one day, God, we're going to live somewhere like that? I mean, just those things that, that only God can do, that only God can show up in that situation. Now, I remember when we, when we first moved here and we got us an apartment, which was, it was the... It was the most rent I've ever paid in the history of my life. 
Okay, so everything to me was like, I was like, Texas is expensive. Everything's bigger. The bills are bigger. And I can remember, and because we were talking to our boys the other day, we said, do you remember when we went that first year or so we lived here that if we went to McDonald's and ordered off the dollar menu was a big deal? Do you remember when we would just, like, and again, back home, we would always go and be doing things here that first little while. We never, it's like we never left the house. It's like, what are we doing tonight? We're like, we're hanging out in the apartment. And I can remember one week being like, the numbers ain't adding up. Things look, things don't look good this week. I don't know what we're going to, we need to do some creative shifting of bills if you've ever been there. And I can remember someone give us a check for $1,000. And I can remember my wife going like, you, of course your first thought is, Babe Rook. I'm just being honest. But you're like, no, we, no, we can't do that. But you're like, man, had this not have come through, what would we have done? You know, I, I, I truly believe the way Jesus sent them out in the water. He said, go out in that boat. Jesus knew the storm was coming. Jesus is not surprised by what we're going through this morning. It didn't catch him off guard. He didn't go like, I can't believe they're dealing with that. No, Jesus sent him out there. Sometimes there's things that happen in our life where our faith has to be tested. Our faith has to be stretched. How can we believe for more? Guess what? If you would have told me before that day that somebody's just going to come up and give you $1,000, I'd have been like, yeah, right. Today, guess what? I believe that. I've had that happen more than once now, and I'm like, it just blows me away. But guess what? Now God has put me, whenever it comes to financial blessings, I'm like, never in my life has that happened. I've heard stories of people that God would come up and do that for. But when God does that in your life, your faith is so increased in that area. Guess what? I, you don't have a problem no more. If, we, if we're balancing the books and something looks short, guess what? You don't, we really don't freak. We're like, God, you've, for two years, you've kept us. And you didn't, we, we didn't step out of the boat and walk out here for you to drop us. Amen? Sometimes you got to go back and look at those little victories in your life where God showed up. And realize and take that and say, you know what? God's not going to drop me. God's not going to forsake me. God loves me. So as we get ready to close today, if everybody would stand with me, just for a few moments here, I believe this is what God wants to ask you today. How many of you need to step out of the boat? How many of you just need to say, you know what, God, there's, there's some things, that, amen, God bless you. But how many of you just feel like, you know what, man, I've just been... I've just been along for the ride. God, I've not really done those things you've called me to do. One word, he said, Jesus said, come, and Peter took off. Some of you, Jesus is saying, come. Some of you, Jesus is saying, worship. Some of you, he's talking about a relationship, or he's talking about something financial. He's talking about the job you work. What are those things where you just need to truly trust him and say, God, I'm going to step out because if, if you're saying it, even when I mess it up, even when Peter started to sink, it said immediately, Jesus grabbed him. Immediately, he grabbed him. Immediately. So if that's you today, I want to encourage you to join me at this front. Guess what? This is your boat that you're stepping out of. This, this is your pew that you're going to have to step out of this morning. And again, all we're going to do is they're going to play a song, and you're going to let God know right now in your life where that is. God already knows, but he wants to hear your voice tell him, God, this is... This is what I'm dealing with. God, this is where I need to step out. Don't be satisfied just riding in the boat. I'd rather step out and, and fall, amen, than never step out at all. Take this time. Let your Father know right now. Let Him know right now what area you need to step out in tonight. Yes, Lord. To step out of my comfort zone to the realm of the unknown where Jesus is. And he's holding out his hand. But the waves are calling out my name and they last in me. Reminding me of all the times I've tried before. Telling me time and time again, oh, you never win. You never win. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. And the voice of truth says. 
the voice of truth says this is for my glory out of all the voices calling out to me I will choose to listen Shaking in their armor Wishing they'd have had the strength to stand But the giant's calling out my name And he laughs at me Reminding me of all the times I tried before I failed The giant keeps on telling me Time and time again
shaking in their armor Wishing they to had the strength to stand But the giant's calling out my name And he laughs at me Reminding me of all the times I tried before and failed The giant keeps on telling me Time and time again today, maybe you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior today. Maybe the call that Jesus is making right now to you is to step out of that boat and come to me. That I sent my son to die on a cross so that you could be free this morning. So if you're out there today, during this time of worship right here, and you've not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, I want to invite you to join me up here at the altar. I want to pray with you today. I want to help you walk on water today and introduce you to the Savior, the one who made it all possible. Yes, Lord. If that's you today. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let me encourage you today, church, to stretch your faith, to believe for those things that God has spoke into your life. All the people that tell you it can't be done are the people that are sitting in the boat. Listen to me, all the haters in this world, it seems like we got are the people that are afraid to step out and to do the things God has called them to do. So they want to tell you that you can't do it. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't. I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't know. I don't know. Listen to the voice of truth today. Listen to what God is calling you to do. Believe for those things that only He can do. Stretch your faith today, church. God, if you don't do it, it does not happen. God, I'm believing you for this for my church. I'm believing you for this for my family. I'm believing you for this in my own life. But God, you have to show up or I'm going to sink. And I believe with everything that's moved inside me today, when it comes down to you sinking or God showing up, that He is going to show up. Amen? Let's pray together today. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word today, God. Father, we thank you for everyone that come forth today to step out of the boat, Lord. Father, we're not happy just sitting in the boat, God. We want to believe for the extraordinary today, God. Father, stretch our faith today for our church, for our lives, for our jobs, for our homes, for our children, Lord. Father, let us call these things as they were, Lord. Let us believe in things that only you can do, Lord. That if you don't show up, it don't happen, God. Father, let us step out of the boat and run to you, Lord. Let us run to you, Jesus. Father, we honor you today. Lord, we thank you today. God, we leave this place full of faith, ready to believe. Lord, to call those things true, Lord. Father, we thank you today. You're worthy in this house today, God. We honor you today, Jesus. In his mighty name, let me hear the church say, 